Broadcasting live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show today. We're discussing the best of Chickasaw country. I'm Brent. And I am Harley. So I did a thing that it's not uncommon. You went to a movie. I went to a movie. And it, you kind of grilled me. You're like, and where'd you go to this movie? And I felt like I was supposed to say the Oklahoma theater because you know what I mean? Like, I know we're, it's all about only an okay, but I wasn't okay and I'm still okay. So did you go to the movie in Texas? No, I went to the, I went to the movie at Tinseltown. I don't mind. I, I like Tinseltown. It's I not, do too. it's not my favorite. Right. But they've done some stuff. They've put some money in over there. Have they? Yeah. They've, upgraded the theaters and then they've done it in the last few years it's not like it just happened last week but uh they've got the 4dx which to me rivals the imax at least the seats are more comfortable i don't feel like i'm in like a a tunnel but yeah i went to go see john wick four you know we talk about a lot of movies you and i kind of grew up we grew up on the same type of movies i i grew up a little you know i'll watch a movie or two with that's that's nominated for uh, an award or two. You won't watch them. Here's my thing about movies that won awards. Okay. 99% of them. What? 99% of the movies that win awards. Yeah. If you fast forward five years, that movie is not in your queue. It's not sitting on your... It doesn't have a lot of replay value. Does it? No. No. Okay. Most of... I mean... No, you're right. But more to so, the point... Go ahead. So again, yeah. I think it is typically pretentious bullshit that oh, Hollywood's trying to yeah. shove down our throats. <laughs> All right. Anyway, can I just speaking of having things shoved down your throat, how about a pistol or two or three? John Wick is probably in my in my humble opinion the best action movie of the last decade, hands down. Uh, I don't know that I have an argument against that. I mean, and I may be going a little bit, well, okay, name, name the one that was 11 years ago. And I probably can't, to be honest with you. Uh, I will say that out of the four John Wick movies, it's not as good as the first, but nothing never really is. You always have a, there are, <laughs> there are a few exceptions. I don't think you've ever said that Jaws the Revenge was almost as good as the first one. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it just doesn't happen. But, dude, I'm telling you, there is a, a body count that will rival any horror movie in this. I mean, it's like, it's video game. It's like, okay, we're going to, let's play John Wick on God mode. Okay. I don't, uh, see, here's the thing. Okay. I like John, I like the first John Wick movie uh -huh. a lot. Yeah. I liked the next two. I liked them. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like it's one of those things where, like they feel like it's necessary to up the up the, up the body count, mm -hmm. up the damage that he takes. Yeah, uh, you know, destroy more yeah. of his car. You know, re-kill his dog. I I'm fine. I get it. I'm fine with the story just progressing uh -huh. and him not achieving God mode. Right. And you know, sawing down a hundred thousand people in Tiananmen Square or something with one gun and. You know, a, a pack pack of matches. Did you ever play a game called Smash TV? No. Anyway, it was a top-down uh, shooter. You went from room to room. It came out in the 90s. Anyways, there is a scene where you switch from panoramic view. Right. To top-down. Okay. So you see all these people, and he's shooting dragon fire, shotgun shells. You see these. You can see the guys coming, and he's just clearing rooms left and right. Do 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 and then it comes back down to the panoramic uh, panoramic view. Then there's a little bit more. And then all of a sudden, the camera comes back up again. There were, They emptied every clip they could in this movie. And and I get what you're saying about, you know, uh, it can be a little bit overkill. Yeah. <laughs> pun, and, pun and no pun intended. I'll, I'll definitely go see the movie. And yeah, I'll it's, probably it's like really, it. Yeah. But my I think my point still stands. The first movie, mm -hmm. he killed a lot of people. The action scenes were great, mm -hmm. and I don't have a problem with there being another movie yeah. where the storyline continues and he kills 
the same amount of people or slightly fewer amount of people. And I think you could still tell the story and it wouldn't be, I, I feel like they're almost getting to the point to where it's ridiculous. Well, and here's the thing. Let's be realistic. When a stunt coordinator directs a John Wick movie, it's, I mean, you're fired if we don't, if we can't up the, you know what I mean? Like if you can't up it even a little bit, you don't have a lot of fight scenes. It's they kind of pull out a little bit to give so that way they can do pull punches and things like that. The fight scenes are as close as you are uh, it, you are to me right now. Mm -hmm. You feel every foom foom foom. There's a part where I'm not I'm not spoiling anything, but Keanu, you know he's he's shot every gun that he he can possibly shoot, and he just robs somebody for some nunchucks, dude. He hit the guy. I mean, I'm sure there were probably there's probably foam or something, but he like pummeled a dude with freaking nunchucks, and then he still had the the frame of thought when he was done to do, you know what I mean? Like there's swords and guns. It's it's just this. Can I? You can bleep it out, but it is a it is a weaponry wet dream. They drop the armory in this movie, and there's actually a decent story behind it. I'm I'm just gonna say yeah, that yeah. there's probably a whole lot of people who are listening and going, that, Oh man, I really lost love lost the fact that yeah, that, that you're talking for ten about, minutes about a movie <laughs> that has nothing to do with the subject that well, I tuned no, in. No, it for. does have something to do with it because we're talking be the best of Chickasaw Country and this is the best The best John Wick movie John Wick, currently but, yeah, playing currently in playing Chickasaw in theaters Country. in Chickasaw Country. I'm sure you can find it showing right now somewhere <laughs> in Chickasaw Country. But yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, all right. So, every year, ChickasawCountry.com ranks the best events, activities, restaurants in the region. Yeah. They just wrapped up their, their votes for 2023 with 20, over 29,000 votes That's, submitted across 17 categories. That is a lot of votes. Yes. For, for any one thing. So, I figured we could discuss briefly... Some of the greatest hits. Some of the greatest hits sure. that are happening in Chickasaw Country, uh, starting with the best antique shop oh. in Chickasaw Country mm -hmm. is Annie Mays Antiques in Purcell, Oklahoma, with 26% of the vote. I have been... I've been... I've parked in front of Annie Mays because I had to go to a wedding across the street, so I haven't had a chance to check out Annie Mays uh antiques but nine thousand square foot of antiques yeah and it's a hundred it's over a hundred year old building with the original ceiling yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff they actually suspect that there's a tunnel that was made during prohibition era not and a the opening comes up in the antique shop there's not a question about it. it it find me a small town in oklahoma that doesn't have a tunnel in it well this place is filled with rustic decor oil and gas collectibles and a whole lot of repurposed or reclaimed items. And again, 26% of all of the votes went, went to, to them. Auntie Mays, yeah, for so sure. if you want more information on them, we'll include a link in the show notes. Well, best attraction. You know, when I think attraction, and maybe my young mind thinks of, you know, I think of a Ferris wheel. But this is a freaking cultural center. It's the cultural center of the universe in Chickasaw Country. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the best attraction was the Chickasaw Cultural Center in Sulphur, Oklahoma, with 27% of the vote. And the Chickasaw Cultural Center actually hit this list more than once. Yeah, that's crazy. It actually topped the list in a couple of different categories. We're only going to talk about it once, but they offer a world of opportunity to learn and connect with first American history. They have the story of the Chickasaw people through powerful performances, reenactments, demonstrations, collections, exhibits. And it is one of the largest and most extensive tribal cultural centers in the United States. There's not, they have events there yearly. You know, I think they also have, they have a, a film festival out there. I mean, they've got always got, and I've seen commercials. Unfortunately, I've never been, but it's a sprawling it's cultural huge. center. It's huge. It really is. We'll include a link in the show notes if you want to know more about the Chickasaw Cultural Center in Sulphur, Oklahoma. Well, you know, you can if you're going through Sulphur, there's a way. I'm not sure how, but you can get to Davis, Oklahoma. Well, there's a and and if you've got a nose for barbecue, you're going to want to get to Davis, Oklahoma. 
Smoking Joe's Rib Ranch. Yes, sir. Right off of I-35. You're in that neck of the woods all often, the time. Often, yeah. And they have phenomenal barbecue. You know and what? You know, you, you know they have phenomenal barbecue when you pull up and it's off hours. Yeah. And you have to drive around to find a parking spot. Oh, yeah. I I, I don't know why. I can't remember if I, I had to drive around. to. I don't know what it was, but I remember driving by. And, and going, golly, where is everybody at? Oh, they're right here. This is where everybody is. It's freaking smoking Joe's Rib Ranch. Uh, they've got great hours. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, they're open 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thursday, yeah, uh, Thursday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Closed on Wednesday. And then Friday and Saturday, they are open 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Well, we go from barbecue antiques to boutiques. Yeah. Um, next on the list is Serendipity on Main in Ada, Oklahoma. With 26% of the votes, this is a charming boutique offering a unique variety of merchandise and apparel. They have a lot of those hard-to-find items, uh-huh. and they have a lot of stuff for newborn gifts and home decor, things of that nature. We'll include links in the show notes. This is probably yeah. not something that you and I would be experts well, in. Well, I don't know. I've I've probably bought my fair share of bejeweled or rhinestone ball caps, Uh and I'm sure they've got something like that. I'm almost I'm gonna be willing to bet they've got something like that. Uh, I guarantee they do. But next up on the list may actually hit a little closer to home for us. <laughs> Sadly. The best casino. Yeah. Windstar World Resort and Casino in Thackerville. Am I allowed to say that this this category may be it might be rigged. I don't know. It how do you you can't compete with a, a casino that's as big as Six football fields. Windstar is huge. <laughs> and I just saw another uh, news story that ranked Windstar tied for third. Jeez. For the best casino in the world. In the world? In the world. There's got to be a... Where are they? There's got to be a Dubai casino that that's slightly better. I'd figure these guys would be number one. The list that I, I found when I was looking for this... Yeah. Foxwoods Resort Casino in Connecticut, mm-hmm. number one. Second, Casino Baden-Baden in Baden, Germany. Ah. And then Windstar tied for third with Casino Lisboa in Lisbon, Portugal. I was I was thinking the the Arab Emirates would be in the in the conversation somewhere. Hey. What do these sultans do with their money? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even think when I think Portugal, I don't think casinos. I think soccer, football. I don't think casinos. That's crazy. It's weird. Yeah, but is, the Windstar Casino is huge. Yeah, it they, is. They've got over 8,500 electronic games available. Yeah. They have a uh, global event center that has like some of the, like some of the best in the world. You are going to be hard-pressed to look at their schedule of uh, artists coming into town. And not find multiple that you're like, oh, yeah, I would totally go see that show. Years ago, I went and saw Steve Martin and Martin Short at this place. Mm -hmm. I got called. I went to a few shows there, but I I got picked to come on stage and do put a I (laughs) Martin Short handed me a sombrero. True story. I wish there were pictures. Someone has the pictures, but I lost them in the fire, if you will. Uh. (laughs) You know, we talked about the only murders in the building show. Yeah. And and how it weird a, it is. That, weird, quinky dink. But you never brought up that you actually were on stage I, with Martin Short. It slipped my mind. I'm sorry. But I did. I get up there and got to do the um got to do the three amigos dance in front of I don't know. So 6, you sold people. them the title of our show. Inadvertently, it must have been the laser, the laser kitty shirt that I had on. The funny story about that. So I'm standing there and we're getting ready, and Martin Short in front of God, everybody goes t-shirt and shorts, t- uh, cat t-shirt and a and and shorts. So go go to a, a theater show. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it was a slick burn in front of about ten grand. But oh, that's awesome. That was a lot of fun. But yeah, there, dude, it's it's a world it's world class. You go out there. And uh, there's always somebody new. And you're like, at a casino? You're like, 
Yes, at a, a casino. Absolutely. Uh, the hotel is nice. I've yeah. stayed there on multiple occasions. They have almost 1,400 rooms, and they are luxury rooms. Really? Hmm. And they've got uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 restaurants and 12 bars from, you know, your most casual show up in in shorts and a cat shirt. Yeah. <laughs> all the all the way to to more formal. Uh, I know I, I, it's funny. I've never, you know, I always hear people say, "Oh yeah, I got a hotel room comped." I'm like, I know I've lost thousands of dollars. How have I not gotten anything more than like a five dollar, a five dollar free play? That I'm not driving two hours, two and a half hours to use my five dollar five dollar free play. So, anyway, I'm glad you had fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, moving on from them, uh, from a place that I have been known to frequent to another place that I have been known to frequent. Why I am not shocked. Best coffee shop. Yeah. Bedre Cafe in Sulphur, Oklahoma, 32% of the votes. I guarantee 30% of that is chocolate. They do have good chocolate. They have damn good. And I don't, and I don't like chocolate. I really don't like chocolate, but I'll get, I can get down with some Bedre chocolate. So this is an all-in-one coffee bar, candy store, sandwich shop, and confectionery. Yeah. Open seven days a week, seven to seven. Great hours, seven days a week. I think that might take the, 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 it might win, it might win the only an okay show. Best uh, hours. Best hours contest. I I could see that. Uh, Again, link in the show notes for all of these places. But next on the list is best family friendly attraction. Chickasaw National Recreation Area in Sulphur, Oklahoma. I don't disagree with that. Uh, I've been there quite a few times. It's the coldest water I've been in. It's some of the deepest water I've been in, but it's some of the most fun I've had as an adult without kids, before kids. <laughs> no, I, I agree. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's completely different from what you would think it is, uh-huh. um, but it's... It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a water oasis. There's nice woods. Woods yeah. all over the place, wildlife. And it really is a, a great backdrop for lots of outdoor activities. Swimming, hiking, camping, fishing. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Well, it sounds like we're on a roll, and uh, we're going to give you some more of the best after this. I'm Raven Rollins, and this is my Southern True Crime podcast where I discuss cases from my former hometown. Ada, Oklahoma paints itself as an average community, but its history of murder and corruption runs deeper than any story has ever told. You'll hear plenty of special guests, including authors and experts in their fields, who visit with me on each episode, as well as other cases in the Southern states. With notorious and unknown cases alike, every victim sees the light on my show. This is Sirens, a true crime podcast. So this is one we've actually talked about on the show. We've lived it. We have lived it. We've been every year for the last 12, 12 years. 12 years? I mean, we could look out the window right now and if probably... If it was the right time the right of year. ...and see if that tells you any about thing about where our location is. Come and get it. The best <laughs> festival... Chickasha Festival of Lights in Chickasha, Oklahoma, with 36% of the votes. Now... I'm gonna, I'm gonna poo poo just a little bit. Is it a festival though? Technically, it's in the name. I know it. I know it's in the name. What do you qualify as a festival? They have food. Okay. They have activities. Yeah. It's themed around Christmas lights. Yeah. What? I mean, I don't have a problem with where it is on the list. In fact, I thought it would be a little higher percentage wise. I just when I think of festival, sorry, maybe. I know you're a homer. You're, matter of fact, a matter of fact, you're wearing <laughs> the fifth annual food truck championship t-shirt. Yes, but that's not a festival. I know it's, a, but is it? It is. is. It? They don't call it a festival. Mm, okay. T- t- sh- I, <laughs> I, I I arrange a, a ceasefire. We will include a link to our previous show about the Chickasha Festival of Light. And let you decide. In the show notes. <laughs> they can decide if it's a festival or not. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Next up on the list, though, is Best Golf Course. Okay. Here we go. Windstar again. Windstar Golf Club in Packerville. 37% I, of the vote. I do have some golfers, golfers in my, in my family uh, that have played Thackerville and have bragged about the Greens being fast they have 
two championship 18 hole courses. Jiminy. Open 365 days of the year. Have you ever, don't lie, have you ever played golf? I have played golf. I'm horrible at it. I'm, I, here's the difference between you and I. I know I would be horrible at it, so I'm not going to try. It's like, there's a list of things I know that right out the gate, I'm going to suck at. Number one would be water skiing. Number two would be snow skiing. Three would be, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that fear has a factor of. Uh huh. But this one is a fear of being terrible. I can Golf see that. Is on the list. I'm just not. That. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a cowardly lion, I guess. That's funny. Next up on the list, though, best lake, Lake Texoma. Gosh, I hate to keep jumping in here. Lots of memories as a kid at Lake Texoma. Lake Texoma is getting a bit of a facelift. Yeah, that's what I hear. There's a new resort going in, which may be done by now. Yeah, and I think we might ought to do a show on that. I've got some questions about that resort. Like it just, yeah, we won't get, we won't go there. Lake Texoma. As far as, as far as things to do, though, it's 93,000 surface acres of water. Every oh yeah. possible activity, yep. camping, picnic areas, hiking, wildlife yep. viewing, fishing, boating, kayaking. If you can think of it, if you've Literally. ever thought of doing it at a lake, it's done here. And you, you can't swing a bat without a, you know, we talk about places adding, uh, should add fishing guides. One of the things, their Texoma's biggest core success is striper fishing. There, I mean, I you know I have cousins that don't need guides, but you you can get guides all year round. Yeah, it's actually I mean, Lake Texoma is the home of uh, the please. Striper Guide Association. Yeah, it's you're listening. You guys are listening. It's like no shit, Sherlock. I know, we know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> seriously, get on. It. Um, again, link in the show notes. But uh, best live performance venue. Hmm is the doghouse at Old Red in Tishomingo, Oklahoma, with 38% of the votes. A lot of people go down there to to Blake Shelton's Old Red uh, in Tishomingo. They're only open on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's how you know. To me, that's a testament of you're making money hand over fist. There's no other way you can justify only being that in. It's a place to party. It's a place to get down. Uh, yeah, I, again, I think if if you're looking for something to do on it's a, a weekend, destination for sure. Um, I would definitely check out the doghouse at Old Red in Tishomingo. Now, here's another one that you you've had extensive experience with. Mm-hmm. Yet another hotel slash casino on the list. The Artesian Hotel is listed as the best lodging in hmm. Chickasaw Country. Interesting that it's for at forty nine percent and Windstar is in the mid thirty range. That's just like what are they based? I wonder. I wonder what the criteria is. It's it's like literally there were five hotels listed. Oh, okay, and they and got forty nine percent of those okay. votes. Makes sense. Yeah, coming in at forty nine percent of the vote. Uh, we just recently did a show about the Artesian. We'll put a link in the show notes if you're interested. It is a cool spot. It is very high end. Like high end yeah. finishes, mm-hmm. they've done an exceptional job, and it is a really unique stay. The building itself has got to be a hundred years old, but leave it to the Chickasaws to come in and repurpose a one hundred year old building. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, sorry, they're not buttering my bread. I wish they were, because it would be a nice French roll with with a with a creamed. Irish butter that went on like linen. That's what it would be like. (laughs) So last on my list, but not last on the Chickasaw Country websites list. Um, Again, there were a couple of dupes in there, but for the full list, go to ChickasawCountry.com. But last on my list is the best winery and brewery. Rusty Nail Winery and Tasting Room in Sulphur. 46% of the vote. So if you love wine, though, the Rusty Nail Winery is supposed to be superb. I'm not a big wine drinker. Yeah, I, I'm i not a big drinker at all. Like, I went out the other night and had a mango margarita, and the bartender didn't care that it tasted like alcohol. <laughs> so, that was, a, that was a tough drive, but uh, 
Yeah, I don't drink a lot of wine, but I've heard a lot of really good things about the Rusty Nail Winery. It's a boutique winery in a restored building in the heart of Sulphur, Oklahoma. Family-operated business established in 2010 by Sulphur women and natives of the area that love wine. Yeah. They're open Tuesday through Saturday, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. And again, we'll put a link in the show notes, but if wine is your jam... Yeah. I mean, because I mean, gr- grapes are more than just that. I like what you did there, because ja- you can make grapes out of jam. No, you can't you can make, make grapes out of jam. Wait a second. You can make you can jam gra- out of grapes. Ju- see, have I been drinking wine? What's going on? <laughs> I, but I see what you're doing there. You're doing a multiverse of uh, <laughs> of grapes, what grapes can do. And again, full list available for you at ChickasawCountry.com. Well, we want to thank you for listening, especially Vitrix at uh, Fountain.fm, who's been out there working diligently to share our clips over there at Fountain. And we really appreciate you doing that for us. Please, if you want to do the same thing for us, it's easy. I, I, well, it's not easy. I haven't figured out how to do it yet. But you can leave us a, definitely leave us a review. We'd love to hear what you think. Good, bad, or indifferent. This has been the Only No OK Case Show. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley. And we're out of here. Peace. Let me find time to make your dreams come true, you son of a bitch. All right, you ready to do it, man? And three, two, one. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Michelle Ford Wan followed me. You know somebody out there is going, that's technically not Kung Fu, what they're doing. It's more like uh, <laughs> Wing Chun. <laughs> Everybody was Wing Chun fighting. Yeah, but there's also some people that are clearly doing a a, a variation of Taekwondo and boxing as well. Everybody was Taekwondo boxing. Mm, yeah, but it's not necessarily only from the area of Taiwan. Um, it's uh, history says that it's been found as far east as Europe. Wait, east? Europe's east. Everybody's count? technical about karate. It is kind of a is it a racist song? Yes. Because we're suggesting that they're funky men from funky Chinatown. <laughs> Big trouble in little China, dude. Dude, seriously? There you go. It's called March 29th. Listen, every time I read something about, you know, Black Adam and then, well, you know, The Rock's got a few projects coming up. They always do this. He's got a few projects coming up. You know, he's got the remake of Big Trouble in Little China. I'm like, you mother here's dude. Why do you got to pull that one out of there? Can we... Can we make that go away? Yeah. You know what you know what they're trying to do? And I got nothing against The Rock. I did finally watch Black Adam and I enjoyed it, but it's kind of like a funeral for a friend. You watch a movie knowing that it's going nowhere and then there's like there's no How do you feel about a movie that has zero stakes? When they set it up to it's like this movie's going to and it did it, dude, it pulled <coughs> You know, what's an average blockbuster? 400 million? Pro- uh, I'd probably say 200. It didn't come close to that. No. None. Well, John Wick made what was it, eighty million in the first weekend? <laughs> Do you want to talk about that now? Uh, no, no, you, I'm not. You want to talk about the now, uh, John Wick? Uh, uh, John the Wick. I see you've returned from the dead to die again. That's basically <laughs> the, the, the whole movie, the, the, the whole fr- franchise. If you loved John Wick and John Wick Two. And three. You know, who was it? Mel Gibson. Yeah. Was really good at getting his ass kicked. Oh, yeah. Like, Real good. Get, like, I bet you if you did, like, a super cut uh-huh. of him just getting punched. Oh, yeah. He was all the time getting his ass handed to like, him. Like, just nonstop. I'm, I mean, and here's the other thing, too, about him. I bought him as Riggs. I, he was crazy. No, I agree. Uh, the, although I will say the guy that they got to play for r- play Riggs for the series, he did a damn good job too. The first series because they switched him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I don't remember why. Like he, I don't know that they didn't just take him out, didn't they? Anyway, but he 
from what I saw of it. I, and I remember you and I talking about that show, and you going, dude, are you not watching the show? I'm like, nah. You're like, it's really good. And the next thing you know, all hell breaks loose, and yeah. then they cancel it. But, but yeah, the problem with that, and it's not even a problem, but the thing I see with, like, um, with Mel Gibson is, you know, you throw one phone, you deny, you know, you deny the well, Holocaust. Well, your dad denies it. You defend your him. You know, him forbid you defend your dad. And the next thing you know, you can't get a job for twenty years. I mean, he's been working pretty steady. He's been in some pretty good movies that yeah, have been. I think he produces them all. Yeah, yeah. You kind of like I'm in this movie. Why? Because I paid for it. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Talk about a guy that was at the at his absolute zenith. And then that the shit hit the fan at the hotel, and uh, <laughs> I mean, I think he, I think he paid his penance for it. But I like Mel Gibson. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say there's a couple of guys that have, have reputations of being a little salty. Him and Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe's got a reputation of being kind of a D. Yeah, he's done some stuff. But I like how Russell Crowe is basically you're like, you know what? I was I was good looking. I mean, he's a good looking guy, but he's put on some. He he's rocking the dad bod and still. Yeah, he's the uh, he's in the. Um, Although I'm gonna have to say, like um, all of my favorite actors, yeah, aren't really the attractive ones. So like, um, oh shit, why can't I think of his name? Uh, John Malkovich. Yeah. He Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. Yeah. Like. All of my favorite actors aren't people that are classically attractive people. Here's the thing. A lot of people, they, they talk with Alan Rickman, they talk about two roles. Die Hard. <laughs> Die Hard and Snape. You got to talk about Galaxy Quest. That movie is good. Dude, he's a great actor. He's a great actor. Yeah. Like, you look at, like, the faces of Alan Rickman. He's done everything. And he's brilliant. Yeah, but he gets he gets the most, I think... In certain circles, he gets the most credit for Nikotomi Tower, you know what I mean? Hans Gruber, and then uh, uh, Snape, for sure. Who's another actor that didn't, you know, isn't going to get a ton of... Probably, you know what's funny, though? We say not the best-looking guys. I guarantee Alan Rickman, with his cool accent, he could have freaking drug all kinds of girls. I'm sure he did, but... But that's, that's not his appeal, yeah, right? It's not not because... Of of his like looks, right? Like he has confidence and, and charisma and all that stuff. Who's another actor um, that doesn't get? He's he's not going to be on a calendar, but he might be on a. You might own multiple copies of his movies in a collection. Uh, Mads Michelson. Michelson, dude, he's a great actor. There's a movie that no one watched. Did you ever watch Polar? Yes, that movie was freaking awesome dude dude he's got like nine lines of dialogue in the whole damn movie i know and he's brilliant, brilliant. he's brilliant in that movie like nobody talks about this movie there was a there's another guy it's um hang on what was the name of that shit give me give me something um uh, the wild west movie was it called well, there was Wild Wild West. No, not that one. Aliens and Cowboys? No, Cowboys and no, 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 the TV show. Oh, uh, Westworld? Westworld. You're, who do you think I'm going to talk about? Ed Harris? No, but he's he's good on the list. Um, um, Madsen. Madsen, the one that played the young cowboy? Nope. Uh, oh, you're gonna, it's Jeffrey Wright. Who's Jeffrey Wright? The professor. The one that basically created them yep dude bernard Lowe. bernard Lowe. is that who i'm talking about then? yeah his name is jeffrey wright yes dude he is a fantastic actor and he, when somebody says oh and uh, uh, on the cast it's going to be jeffrey wright i'm like i don't give a shit if the budget's 20 dollars. if he's in it i'm watching he's a great actor he's a great actor man he had a really good character on boardwalk empire which on Boardwalk Empire, which, by the way, was a fantastic show, but he played Dr. Narcisse, which basically he was like the head of the black cli black crime family of the, of the 1920s and 30s. Hmm. So and he kind of ran what would technically be like Black Wall Street, where all the, where everything was happening. And 
dude, he was just cold blooded, smooth as silk. But he's another one that's that just he doesn't even have to try. The dude from Fargo. Oh, Steve Buscemi. Buscemi, yeah. Buscemi. He's a good actor too, man. He, but yeah. he's butt can ugly. Well, yeah, but but he's a brilliant actor. Brilliant actor, and he's good at everything that he does, like everything. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I would take a Steve Buscemi movie. No other details given to me. I would rather have a Steve Buscemi movie or a Jeffrey Wright movie yeah, or yeah. a Madsen movie yeah. than a Rock movie. Any day of the week. I mean, I, I think that Rock brings a, he puts asses in seats, but then again, he didn't put very many asses in this. And there was rumors about, and most of them have confirmed that he put the kibosh on Shazam 2 because the um, Zachary Levi, who played Shazam, the plan all along was to do a crossover with Shazam because there is a... And I always thought in the beginning because I thought they were going to do a live-action version of... What is it called? I want to say it's like um, Shazam. It's Shazam and Superman versus Black Adam, basically. So I thought, okay, this is what's going to happen. But no. The Rock said, I'm not... Because it, in a character hierarchy, there's... Su- in the in those the three superpowers of the DCU, it goes Superman, Shazam, Black Adam. Black Adam is a secondary character. Rock didn't want to be a secondary character. Because, hell, have you seen Black Adam? Yeah, I didn't like it. Oh, that was fun. Anyway, but... It was... It was okay. I enjoyed it, but, it, but the point is, at the end of the Black Adam, you see Superman, Superman come into the frame because, you know, the whole thing is, well, who is, who else, he's like, who can control me? Well, uh, naturally, Superman. A bunch of people do. A, bu- a bunch of people can, but more specifically, you know, just because there's a, a cam- I'm sorry, I know you're not used to these big time cameos, Rock, but just because Superman shows up in your movie doesn't mean the natural, I mean, hell, you can, we could go down the list of movies that, didn't play out like the credit scene. Uh huh. So I think there was a foregone conclusion that it was going to be Shazam versus Superman, mm. and he put the gouache on it. Sabot not only sabotaged his movie, but sabotaged the Shazam two. Shazam two, but for more to the point, and a lot of these movies were already made and decided before they decided that that DC was going, um, and was going to be. Reboot the, <laughs> the they were rebooting the reboot. So you know what we really need. What we haven't ever had is a Batman origin story movie. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this about the Batman. I know you'll never watch it. You may have, and you'd never tell me if you did. I saw it. At least they didn't have the classic scene where he, his parents get shot in alleys, and there's a string of pearls. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, is the modern-day Steven Seagal. Now, hang on a second. I see why you're saying that. But if you, if you, the difference is, if you split Seagal's career up and did ninety or eighty-eight to, because I'm trying to eighty-eight, 94. 88, 94, rock solid. Uh huh. And then you, then when the internet comes out and you realize that. That Aikido is really, it is a martial art, but you're not going to be able to, you know, throw somebody through. Your, the goal is to throw somebody through a deli, the window of the deli. Yeah. I think there was a part where Rock was, I just think he's too he's too big for his britches now. I don't think he, I hate to say, and this is a hot take. He's been doing movies since, you know, Return to Witch Mountain, The Rundown, mm-hmm. Walking Tall. Which were all packaged, just generic action. Uh huh. Which I think, I think The Rock took over the mantle for a lot of the guys that like retired or got thrown in jail for beating their girlfriend up and stuff. Yeah. I can't think of a movie. And I'll, here's why I like this: the Black Ad, Black Adam is my favorite movie by The Rock. He really doesn't say a whole hell of a lot in the movie. He's not a great actor. No, he's not a great actor, but I will give him he has the Moxie? No. No. The smart ass comeback 
um, down pretty pretty good. Like I, that's his shtick. I think he he reminds me of him. Maybe this is why I have a, a like an aversion to him because I never just I never liked the jock dudes. Like I didn't have friends that were. I mean, I had some friends that were that were jocks, but we weren't like super close. And you know, I might have been a jock for a little while, but he just reminds me of like the homecoming king made good, but so, never really stopped being the homecoming king. Unlike most of us, where we got your he just home- has no flex. He has zero flexibility, no, dude. He, doesn't. he plays himself in every movie. Yeah, and the only reason that you can find yeah that you like Black Adam yeah <laughs> is because he doesn't <laughs> talk right. <laughs> that doesn't make for a good movie. Like, yeah, if we could just get the star to not say a f- word, is there like? Well, I mean, could, could it, it have he, been like a side effect of being frozen where he doesn't have any lines? This is what I like. Okay, so this is what I liked about Black Adam. Um, I liked some of the effects. I thought Pierce Brosnan was really good as Dr. Fate. But anyway, what I liked about the movie was about The Rock is he delivered those kind of dead, like he was the, you know, there's a scene where I can't remember the kid's name. But that was trying to tell yeah, him how to be a hero. Yeah, it stuck with you so well, well because well, it was such a great movie. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, right, it did, it, there was no impact. But was teaching him how to be like how to be a superhero, and he's like, yeah, no, you're gonna have your chance. You're gonna have your catchphrase. The, the Terminator Two scenes, right? Where he, like, I'll, I'll be back. And I'll be back again. And when he dropped the guy, and, and he's like says his catchphrase after he dropped the guy. I thought that was funny. It was a, it was it was a fun movie because again, I didn't have there was zero there was no skin in the game. There were zero stakes to this movie. Okay, so here's the thing. I what? thought that it was an okay watch, mm-hmm. but I had no I was not involved in the story. I had no emotional buy-in in the story. I didn't give a shit. Yeah, about any single character except maybe the the fat Persian guy. Oh yeah, he was kind of funny. He was the only one where I was like, ah, I hope they don't kill him. Yeah, everybody else I didn't care about. Like the leading lady chick, like drop a building on her. I'm sick of her whining. Oh, okay. So give it to give it some credit. The the bad when he reveals himself to the first time in the cave slash temple and they're trying to get the crown back when he starts just annihilate to me, that's the part of the movie where I'm like, God, I hope this man, he, this dude's a badass. when he grabbed the guy and basically turned him into a skeletal ash. And Mm -hmm. then the skull hit the ground. I was like, Oh, that's some Terminator stuff, right? (laughs) That's every Terminator movie. (laughs) We get a, we get a, a skull, but I don't know, man, I didn't hate it. I just, I didn't hate it either. I just didn't, like I didn't care. I haven't watched your because I'll say um, people are like, "Have you seen Jum? Oh, you like that? Have you seen Jumanji? Mm-mm. You haven't seen the new Jumanji? Mm-mm. I, are there anything for you? Real quick, and we'll jump back to get into the show. Is there anything for you that you're you're that much of a purist about that you that you're not even willing to go? Well, okay, I'll see. Let me see what they did. They reboot reboot the thing. Too late. Uh, They're working on it now. I will burn. Hollywood to the ground. It's it's happening. It's already happening. Like they've already greenlit it. If The Rock is <laughs> is, Mac- is McCready is McCready with it, I will literally burn the entire country to the ground. We wanted to make it more, as authentic as the original. You put a you pasted a beard on The Rock. He looks like <laughs> he looks like a freaking god, a Greek god with a blow. A, you know, Same thing with Big torch. Trouble in Little China. It pisses me off. I'm not watching it. I have no desire. I, yeah, you've lost me. I, I don't know who, but I, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to A, bring it back, but B, it's a different target. It's I promise you're not, your target demo is completely different than the original is. Yeah, it's not us. It's not us at all. But yeah, Jumanji is one where I'm like, but nope, I'm out. But they just can't. They don't have the ability. Yeah. There is nobody making movies right now that can make the thing to the level <laughs> to of, hit that. Like, dude, yeah. you hear the music, boom, boom, boom. the back of your neck oh. tightens up, and you're like, and you already, and that's, that's you know, that's one of those things when a movie that you already know what happens, still when you hear that, boom, 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 
they you're just, like, they don't have the ability to do dude, it. I did that myself. I've I already got chills tomorrow. Then here's the thing. There's no amount of C- – and what's sad, and maybe someday we can go back and look and see how old CG is, but the mere fact that we haven't come far enough in technology – not that I want it to happen, but we haven't come far enough in technology to even rival a piece of clay. A, oh, yeah. No, a I bucket don't, of I don't, real I don't blood. Get, you know, here's the thing. Literally? <laughs> like the scene where the dude's head pops off and turns into a spider. Yeah. The, the closest Hollywood has gotten to that that level of terrifying yeah. is like Helen Hunt without her makeup on. <laughs> That's wrong, dude. Like, they've not done, there's not a single creature yeah. that they've come up with that it was as terrifying as oh, that yeah. one part, the one cut scene in when the thing. The whole... And the fact they knew it was good because they literally put the camera on that whole sequence. They're like, we spent the money on this effect. By God, we're getting it in every, it's going to be in every inch of this film. When the head just kind of, yeah, you know, you're, and it takes off and he's like, got to be kidding me. You know what I mean? But dude, tell me, <laughs> tell me another scene, any scary movie you want. Any that that packs the, the same punch that had that level of like, I may have one. What? 1988's The Blob when the face is coming through the blob and you and you can see it pushing through like this and the eyes are kind of popping out and it's just like it's one of the coolest effects. No, I agree. That, it, that but is, here's the thing: if you do a timeline, all the cool shit because we could do it. We could go. Oh shit, that movie. Oh. 1980, 1980 this, 1980 that, 1988. Dude. I mean, honestly. Even the special effects in the original Star Wars outshines the special outshines the special effects yeah. that they used to re to re not to reimagine to rework the original. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, it looked better the first time. Yeah. Without the computers. How yeah. is it possible that you took a picture mm-hmm. and moved some little lights on it in the background to make it look like it was a city? And now, 30 years later, you've got all the damn computers. And you computer, can't make it look and right. And you can't make it look like a city. It looks... And my problem I have with CG, especially when you put a human against the blue screen, is even still... You know, you know, you want to know why movies look better on the big screen? Because when you see them on the small, small screen, it exploits the fact... That it makes you or I look like we're pasted up against this digitized world, mm-hmm. because yeah, you sp- less pic- less pixels, more imperfections. Mm-hmm. But no, you're right. All right, you ready for this? Uh, don't have it. Yeah, you do. Um, I'm looking at it in the inbox. I see Heavner. I see the coffee cup. I see Wister. Mm-mm. We'll hit the refresh. It's literally the top of the list. It says March 29. There it is. I don't have it. All right, man. Welcome to show. We're discussing the best Chickasaw country. I'm Blit. <sighs> and the Hollywood Minute continues on the only and okay shows.